Fewer men and women in jail awaiting trial. Crime down the first half of the year. Advocates say those are the signs that New Jersey bail reform that started January 1st is working. The initial data that we've seen makes me very hopeful that it is improving community safety, improving fairness, and ensuring that, that voters aren't overpaying for jail we don't need to be. Matt Alsdorf is the vice president of criminal justice for the Laura and John Arnold Foundation, a Texas nonprofit helping some 40 jurisdictions with bail reform. New Jersey is engaged in, I think, what is the most substantial reform of its pretrial system, of its bail system, of any of the jurisdictions that we've worked with across the country. New Jersey and the other states and counties rely on the Arnold Foundation's Public Safety Assessment, or PSA, an algorithm or recipe of nine factors that researchers came up with after reviewing some 750,000 pretrial cases. The factors include age, nature of the charge, convictions, failure to appear, and incarceration. The PSA questionnaire aims to predict whether someone charged with a crime will show up for court or commit a crime if released before trial, instead of relying on money for bail to get out. It doesn't include things like neighborhood or education level or family status or anything like that. Factors that have been accused of leading to racial bias and that Alsdorf says, when included, did not make the tool any more predictive. The Arnold Foundation came up with the public safety assessment tool and it says that tool is in no way meant to replace the discretion of the judge and they, as I mentioned, can take into account any factors that they're aware of outside of the risk assessment. So the objective of the risk assessment is in no way to determine what happens in the outcome of the case. Is this a perfect system? No, of course not. Unfortunately, there's no way to create a perfect system. All he was doing was walking home from a convenience store. This summer, June Rogers became the second person to sue New Jersey and the Arnold Foundation over bail reform. Rogers blames reform for freeing a convict who days later was accused of murdering her son. We've got a product that when you run people through it will tell you whether or not they're dangerous. This product failed. I in no way minimize the tragedy of incidents that have happened in New Jersey, but I think it's important to realize that those types of incidents happened in prior systems as well. How algorithmic predictions are used depends solely on humans, and Rutgers University law professor Ellen Goodman says she's curious as to how often New Jersey judges disregard or override the PSA, numbers New Jersey is not compiling. But we don't know how often that happens, um, and so that's data that local government may be collecting, maybe they're not collecting. Um, we think they should collect it and we think that should be released to the public. Goodman co-founded the Rutgers Institute for Information Policy and Law. She welcomes the use of algorithms to peer into a judge's decision making. And so in a way we now have an opportunity to get into the black box that we never had access to before and understand whether there are unconscious or systematic bias or other problems with fairness or errors um, so that's an advance. The Arna Foundation recognizes bail reform is drying up the bail bonds industry, which looms large in the two lawsuits. I think it's a real shame that these special interests are trying to cherry pick these examples and use them uh, to advance their own financial interests. As the suits move forward, the Arnold Foundation says so does the momentum for bail reform. Michael Hill, NJTV News.